Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a beginner tutorial on Backbone JS. We will be creating a very simple Hello World app in this beginner tutorial and we'll just go over some of the basics of Backbone JS and how to use it. If you would like a brief introduction to Backbone JS discussing a brief history of what brief history of Backbone JS, what Backbone JS is and why you should be using it, then please click the annotation here to go to the video. If you are ready, we shall now begin. This is the application we will be creating in this tutorial. It is a simple Hello World app, however, it does have a little twist. If we should press this change name button here, we will see that we are given a prompt to enter a name. So if we should enter a name like Dylan, we shall see that the Hello World has now changed to Hello Dylan. We will now have a look at the code to see how we use Backbone.js to change elements in on the web page. This is the source code that we'll be using in this tutorial. As you can see, it's just basic HTML and JavaScript. The HTML we'll be using is very basic. Here is a we have a title element with hello, we have the div element with ID name, and with the bu button or with ID change name as the change name button. The div with ID name is the div is the element we'll be using to change the name that we saw in the web app. Whereas the button change name will be the button we press when we want to change the name and call the event. We can also see that we have included some scripts. The first script is the a is that we've included is the jQuery script. While not necessarily needed for Backbone, I do recommend it because it does make coding with JavaScript a lot easier. But However, the two big dependencies that we do need here is to include backbone.js and underscore.js. The reason we need underscore.js is because backbone.js itself has a dependency on underscore and often, and often will use functions from underscore.js. Another tip is to have underscore.js be loaded in first before backbone.js as backbone is going to be calling back to underscore functions and we want underscore to be rendered first. I will include links in the description down below in which you can go and find the files for backbone and underscore.js. Now on to our actual code, the script that we write to make this web app work. As you can see we will surround our main script with the javascript jQuery function document.ready. What this does is it makes sure that the script is not rendered until the full web document, until the full HTML has been completely loaded. What this helps to do is it stops us from having a situation where JavaScript, uh, where we try to manipulate an element in the HTML from JavaScript before the HTML element has been, has been created, which would create an error that really gets in the way of the code from working. And from there on, we move on into our um, main part of the code that we're using. This code, in this code, we have declared a model and a view, and we will also be using an event. Now, the model and the view are the basis on which Backbone is based, and are the ma main objects that we'll be using when you, that you use when using Backbone. So, as you can see here. We this is where we have created our model. Now, the model in Backbone is an object, that is an object, and the model is where you will be storing all the data that you want to manipulate or will be using in your web application. So now, what you need to do to create it is to create an object and then extend it from the Backbone.model object. And that's what we've done here. We have our name model object, which is the Backbone.model.extend to create it. Now this, is, now this model will hold the, our name attribute. As we can see here in part of the declaration of the model object, we have a thing, an attribute called the default. What this specifies is the default attributes and their values that we want the ob model object to have. So for here we have declared our default attribute and its value to be the name attribute with a value of world. So now we have created our model object. Now to create an instance of that object, we declare a name model of name model variable and we have it as a new name. So this creates an instance of our model object. 
Another way of doing this is, of course, if you don't want to use de the defaults or anything like that, is you can also, when you declare, create an instance of a new model object, is you send through to it the parameters, some parameters that are the attributes of, that you want the object to have. So here we can also write it as having this with our name, attribute, and its world value. The next thing we create is the name, is the view object. Now the view is what is associated with an element in your HTML. And the view is what renders the data that you have stored in your model onto the HTML page. And the view can be used to update the HTML when any any time a change is made to a model that is associated with it. So just like the model object, we also create a new object, this one, name view, and we extend it from the backbone.view object. Now in the view object, we will be instantiating a few things. If we have here, look here, we will see that we have instantiated an attribute called L. What L is, is it stands for element, and every view has an element that it is associated with in the HTML. This HTML that the view is associated with is where the HTML content will be rendered. As you can see here, the element we have associated with this view is the div, the div with the ID of name. The next thing we create here is the initialize function. This is the first function that is called whenever a view is instantiated. So in this function, we have this dot render. So we call the render function, which will um, put the name in our name into the um, web app. We also attach we also attach to this view a listen to event. Now the listen to event is a event listener basically. And what we have here is we assign it an object to which it must listen for an event from an event that the listen to will listen out for when it happens to the, the specified object and a method that will be called when, the, when this event is detected. So as we can see from here, we can see that the listen to event attached to this view listens to our model, namely the name model. It looks for a change event, so if any change to the status of the model is created, and it will then call the render function to re-render the HTML element with the new data from our model. The reason that the listen to can listen out for this event is because we're, because in Backbone.js, models, when, it's cha when a change of status occurs in a model, they send out a kind of event notification that an event has taken place. The last thing we have called in our view is the render function. The render function is where we'll be rendering the HTML content into the DOM. So as you can see from here, we have our element, and we change it, the HTML in our element to the data in our model. How we get the data from our model is simple. A model has a function called the .get method, where you can specify an attribute. So what the .get method does is it retrieves the value of the specified attribute from the model. So here we ask our name model, and we, got, we get from our name model the value of the attribute name, which at this point is world. So this dot render will render into our HTML, specifically inserting here the name attribute of our model, which is the world value. Now to obviously instantiate this view, we, call, we create an object, a variable called name view, and assign it a new name view. Here is the actual code in which we will be changing and using our view and model. So on our change name button, we detect a click using the click function. So we create a new variable, new name. We give the user a prompt, asking for them to please enter a new name. And then we use the dot set method of the model to give the name name attribute a new name. Now the dot set method of a new mo of a model will set an attribute whether existing or non-existing, and sets the specified attribute name to the given value. 
So here we ask our name model to set the name attribute to the new name that was given to us from the prompt. So let's again see what happens when we go back to our app. So as you can see, we are back in our app with Hello World. We hit the change name button, which will then, um, which will then initiate the click function. The click function then calls the prompt and gives us a prompt. We enter our value. We'll give him a Dobson for fun. We enter the value and it changes it. So let's head back to the code and go through just how this happened. So now we are back at our code. So what happened when we used that function to change the name using our click and view? Well, to begin with, once the document had fully loaded, the model had been created with the default name of name and world. We then created an instantiation of an instance of that model. We then created our view. The view was associated through the L with our div, our div with the ID of name. We then had an initialized function so that when that view is created, first of all, it would render the hello the world part of hello world by going to here and render it and using the name model dot get getting the value of world that was assigned as the default. It then attached a listener to the name model, looking for any change that, that would happen to the name model and would then re-render our stuff. We then created an instance of the name view, initializing what we had just covered. So when we clicked the change name button, what happened was we were given a prompt. We entered the name. We then, using the dot set method of, a, of the Backbone.js model, set the name to the new name entered. What this did was cr change the name attribute in the name model. And this event, which would send out a, no a notification saying that the model had changed, triggered our event listener over here in the view that is associated with the name model and was a change to the net model. So we then called the render function to deal with this change, which the render function then got with the HTML, with then got, put the HTML in our div, changed it by getting the new name from our name model using the dot get method of the model. And that's all the code there is to do it. Without backbone.js, what we would have had to do if there was a change to the view, change to that thing, is have an event trigger when we change that attribute, and then find any element in the HTML that has that value and manually changed it. This is where the strength of the backbone comes in, because it allows us to change things automatically without having to go through the DOM one by one, checking every element. We just need to re-render the view that is associated with that model and that element. Thank you very much for watching this beginner tutorial of Backbone.js. I do hope that you found it helpful and that you will continue learning Backbone.js in the future as it is a very powerful and versatile library. Should you like to, to fiddle around with the code that you saw in this tutorial, I am including a link in the description below to where you can get the files for yourself. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.